Hello world and welcome back to Evergreen Secrets. I wanted to give you a quick little update on how things are going. I have not forgotten about my promise to uh, do all the studies for Sawilo on our Random Runes project. Um, I actually had some really interesting things happen after doing the last video. I don't think my brain was quite done with Degas and so I um, I've been kind of experiencing some interesting things. I've uh, had a couple realizations about my direction in life and also my priorities, which has been really good. Um, also my boundaries, which has been kind of an interesting um, reinsertion re into my life. So, um, so that's been um, kind of still going in the background. I don't think I was really done with Day Guys yet. I had done all of the the book learning, but I hadn't really done the internal processes, which is a little scary because uh, it's kind of turning my world a little bit on its side. Uh, it's not completely upside down, but it's it's getting a little bit interesting. So, um, so this project is actually going to take a little bit longer, I think, than I was hoping that it would. I was hoping that we would just do one month, one rune, and we'd be done in two years. Everything's good, good to go. Um, but as with any of these projects that where you're really doing some introspection and, um, and really interesting things there, it, it's getting to be a little bit more interesting than <laughs> interesting and maybe not always a good way. Um, but, uh, everything's fine. It's just, it's just a little bit of a shakeup for, um, for kind of my, my mental thing. So it's, it's kind of a, an internal process. So. It's been very interesting, um, but yes, I will be getting to Sawilo. Hopefully in the next month, I'll be able to start um, start that whole process. But then of course that also coincides with Samhain. So that's gonna be really interesting. Um, when I picked Sawilo, it was the middle of August. I was thinking, oh, this is perfect. I'm gonna be able to go through and look at this and oh, I can experience the sun in all of its splendor in so many different ways. And I haven't started yet. It's October and it is rainy and windy outside and I haven't seen the sun for three days. So it'll be really interesting to study the sun in the middle of fall um, in the Northwest. So yeah, so that's kind of the update on where things are going with the Random Runes project. It's definitely not gone. It's just kind of been on pause while I get everything kind of internalized and processed inside me. Um, it's, uh, it's been an adventure and I've been able to do some new things. So that's been really good. Um, but it's, it's definitely been a trip. So, um, so what I'm going to do for this video, instead of just having it be an apology video, sorry guys, um, I'm actually going to show you some things that I've purchased or found lately that are of the witchy variety. And so, um, just some interesting things that I found over time and, um, and then uh, kind of talk through what those are. And so here it is, my witchy haul video. See you in a bit. All right, so let's uh, take a look through some of the stuff that I've gotten recently that is of the witchy variety. Um, it's kind of interesting. I've kind of slowly been adopting the term witch as a term to describe myself. And um, it's starting to feel almost comfortable almost. But, um, but yeah, so here's some things kind of of the spiritual variety that I've, um, that I've picked up recently. Um, I picked up a couple new stones. So the rose quartz, some amethyst, sodalite. These are kind of the, the basics. I found this one at a, um, at a crystal shop actually at our local solstice festival here in Seattle and this is called mookite and what this is is this is a form of jasper that you can only find in a certain area in Aust in western Australia there's a certain creek there called Mooka Creek that um, that has this this jasper there and it is um, it's just really comforting um, the kind of the associations with this is the Aboriginal Earth, Earth Mother and all of the um, healing and the, the grounding capabilities that she has and um, the healing 
and increasing your will and your focus. So I find this to be a very, um, a very comforting, a very grounding stone. It's nice and heavy, so it um, it even feels really good in your hand. And um, I was really drawn to it. I'm normally not drawn to anything of the brown variety, which, I mean, this has got a little bit of a red, but even red tones for me are not really my standby. I re generally tend to go towards the purples and the blues. Even um, even rose quartz really isn't a, a, a pretty easy thing for me to get gravitated towards. But this one just kind of called to me out of the bin there, and uh, and it has been a great stone to work with. It's um, I need to work with it a little bit more actually after all the shakeup from Degas. So um, so this has been a really uh, a really nice stone to have around. Um, another thing that I was able to do is uh, my husband and I took a trip over to the the coast, over to the Pacific Ocean, and we picked up a couple interesting things there. Um, the first thing that we found is this lovely little guy here. This is called a pocket spirit. And as you can see, it is the sun representing energy. And it still kind of has a little bit of the tag from the back there. They have a little price tag on the back. But, um, but this is supposed to be just something that you can slip into your pocket and you can carry it around with you kind of as a reminder of whatever you need. They have several different types of this. These are all done by, um, by this company called Native Northwest and they have a whole set of them. And, um, I'm myself not Native American, but uh, but it, it you kind of can't avoid it in the Pacific Northwest, and so um, you still get kind of drawn into the spirits that they have here because it's so ingrained in the in the culture, and then um, even in the the names of the cities in this area, you know, like Chief Seattle, Puyallup, Squim, you know, there are all these really weird names that most other areas are like, what what does that mean? But um, but they have all these different pocket spirits. I picked up the sun to kind of go with our study of Sawilo there, but um, but he's a kind of cute little guy. And so um, so as, as I get more into Sawilo, we'll be studying with him a little bit more just to kind of get that perspective. Another thing that I was able to find is there is a lovely shop in uh, in Port Townsend that sells all kinds of stuff. It's like, it's a crystal lover's haven and everything. But I found this little dragon. Isn't he cute? I've never really been one for like having an animal spirit, but if I had one, it would probably be the dragon. And I saw this guy and I thought, he is so cute. I'm going to have to bring him home. And so he's going to be my little altar guardian there. Isn't he adorable? And then a couple other things that I found on that trip, um, other than just some good time with nature, uh, is we actually went over to the coast and um, and they, we found these awesome ocean stones. So there was a big pile of these guys. They're pretty good size. So you can put like a, easily put like a, a tarot card on there for um, for some study, just kind of as a focal point there. And, um, and so these guys just are so beautiful. They're all worn smooth from all the time in the ocean. And they're really, really good hefty guys. So, you know, nothing's going to blow away. I really like the, the striations there. They're really just gorgeous. And so, um, so yeah, we got picked up a couple a couple stones there um, along with just some really good reconnecting with nature. There's some really beautiful things that uh, that are available on the coast there that um, that we were able to do. Um, and then we also got some prayer flags. The ones that we had in our on the side of our house have pretty much gotten destroyed by the elements and so it was time to get some more. So um, So we always like to have these on the side of the house sending all those prayers off into the wind. So we're going to be hanging those up here in probably the next couple weeks as soon as it stops raining. So that'll be fun. Let's see, what else do we got? Um, so another thing that I was able to do is go to our local Pagan Pride event. And, um, and I was able to go to the opening ceremony and they did a really cool thing where, uh, where we took this 
this yarn and we kind of made a web of it between all the people who are in the circle and just kind of binding everybody together and the beads representing um, re representing the community coming together and all the beads in different shapes and sizes and all that fun kind of stuff. So uh, it was a really neat ceremony. It was my first time going to Pagan Pride, surprisingly enough. I do tend to be very solitary, so um, so going there was a little bit of a, of a different thing for me, but um, but yeah, it was really fun, and I just kind of wanted to, they, they let us take these home as, as something to work with, and so I did that. And then also while I was there, I was able to find some other things. I found a little bell, isn't it sweet? And it has these little, little feather, little marks in it. So sending that off for the element of air, that little sound. So this one had a really good, good vibe to it. So we brought that guy home. Another thing that I was able to do is they actually had a wonderful, um, a wonderful little vendor area at the Pagan Pride here um, for the sound, and I was able to pick up some tarot bags. I've never really been one for tarot bags. I usually just use the box that the bag that the tarot deck come comes in, or I um, will use like a ribbon. But I found that even the ribbon these days is it's it's not terribly nice to the tarot decks. So, um, so I actually picked up some new ones and this is one that I got. Isn't that beautiful? I love the colors. Um, and the, just, you know, the way that she did that and centered the, um, the tree on there and it's really well made. The button's really easy. And so this is now the home for my wildwood tarot. So, um, I've had this deck for quite a while, but I, yeah, I'm still we're still coming to terms so it's a it's a little trickier one than your normal writer weight so um, but I was able to find it a nice little home and it had been kind of loose just wherever wherever I could place it and um, and so now I have a nice little home for it and I thought the the treat would kind of represent that energy of the wildwood tarot and I also found this cool little bag this is a bunch of different Icelandic staves. So we have the, the Helm of Awe, we have the, um, the Vegvisir, which is kind of the Nordic compass. We have all these different um, designs. And the gal who made this actually commissioned this fabric. Isn't that beautiful? And, um, and so I've been obviously into runes for quite a while, which means you kind of get into bind runes, right? Like these guys here. And, um, and when you do, you kind of get drawn to this kind of stuff, but isn't that just gorgeous? I don't know what deck I'm going to put in here yet, but, um, but I just had to have it. And these, uh, rune bags are by Divine Nocta Vega. She actually has a, um, she has an Etsy shop. So if you go to Etsy.com and you search for Divine Nocta Vega, I'll actually put a link down to her shop down in the, um, in the notes, but she has all kinds of different bags of just about every variety. She is really good at finding just really unique and beautiful fabric to use. And so uh, I've never really seen anything quite like what she puts together. And like I said, she, she actually commissioned this one, this fabric. So I thought that was really cool. So let's see, what else did we have? Um, so I am a queen of shopping at the um, at the craft store or the dollar store or um, or even the dollar bins at Target for uh, for little witchy supplies. So I actually picked up a couple of those this year. Um, the first one is this guy. So it just kind of looks like a little gravestone here, and it's actually painted with. Uh, with chalkboard paint so you can write in so if you have like a, a bind rune or if you have some kind of a sigil that you want to write on there anything that you want to lay to rest and put a tombstone over obviously that's going to be really good for this one so um so I thought that would be kind of interesting, both from a Samhain part perspective, just for decoration, but also for a magical purpose of being able to kind of let things go and put them to rest and bury them and be done you know, get that morning over with. So, um, so that's one of the, the little guys that I got there from, from the craft store. And then kind of along that same line, I was able to find this lovely little box. So we've got a pretty standard coffin shaped guy here. It's not the most, uh, fancy 
wood. It's it's pretty cheap wood there, but um, but it does open up, and so you've got plenty of places to put a spell or um, or write out what you want to get rid of or whatever you need to do. Again, just to kind of put the lid on it, seal it up, and say, okay, you're done. You're you're buried. Everything's over with, and um, and then also it kind of just looks cool. So um, so that was kind of a neat little find there. And that one, I think I got that one at Target. And then also at Target, I found this cute little decoration. So check this out. The witch is in or the witch is out. Um, so this is just some brushed metal with some paint on it, but I thought that was super cute. So kind of, um, I kind of use things like this as a mental reminder of, okay, this is my space. We are doing witchy things now. We are doing magic. So, um, so I thought that would be kind of a fun way to kind of, um, call that energy in as I, as I'm doing my, my work there. Um, another thing that I found is this lovely thing. It's called Sleeping Death, a bewitchingly scented candle. And um, this actually is just a plain old candle with this spooky sense of cranberry, juicy plum with red apples, warm cinnamon, and golden nutmeg. And I wish, I wish I could just send the smell of this to you because oh, it smells so divine. Oh my goodness, it's fabulous. So that was kind of a cute little thrift store or uh, that wasn't thrift store. That was just a regular store find. But, um, and then I also picked up some Palo Santo. So, uh, from what I've heard, for people who are not terribly fond of sage for smudging, that um, that Palo Santo is kind of the next thing to try. It kind of, in theory, has a sweeter smell to it. And, um, and so, as you can see, I've kind of tried it a little bit, but I don't know if I'm doing it wrong or maybe I got some cheap stuff that's just not right, but it just smells like burning wood to me. So if you are a user of Palo Santo and you have some tricks about how to actually use it in a way that doesn't just make it smell like a campfire in your house, um, let me know because this I'm, I'm still trying to figure this one out, but I picked it up because I'm, I'm just not terribly one for sage. It's it just kind of smells like a pot shop to me, I guess. So, um, which kind of all of, Se of uh, Seattle kind of smells like that these days now that we've legalized it. So, um, so yeah. And then the other thing that I got was another box. This is, it looks kind of like a book. So you can see kind of it looks like a book, but it's a box. Oh my goodness, it's so awesome. It's actually quite big. So you can kind of see the size there. It's about, eh, let's see almost 12 inches so it's almost a foot long there I just love maps I love old maps so um, so this is just something that I'll keep around and maybe put a little maybe store some stuff in there I don't know I just love containers it's super fun and then uh, the last thing that I wanted to show you is I have a new tattoo oh my goodness check it out it's so pretty, trying to angle it there for you. This is the Veg Visir. You saw it also on that uh, on that tarot bag. And uh, this is, they call it the Viking Compass. And it is a way to, to know your way in a storm even when the way is not known. And so this is the top, just FYI there. But, um, and then I got kind of the galaxy swirl behind it. This was done in um, probably Seattle's best tattoo shop, Slave to the Needle. And it is, um, I'm so happy with it. It's still kind of in that flaking stage, so that's why it doesn't look exactly perfect. But um, but I'm just super happy with how it turned out. I kept it, keep it right there in the wrist so I can kind of see it when I'm at work or what have you to be like, okay, I know where I'm at. I, I'm, even if things are seeming a little unstable right now, everything will be okay. So, um, so yeah, so that's kind of that. And so that's pretty much all I had. Um, but uh, I just kind of wanted to check in with you guys and let you know that Suilo is not forgotten. I am still still there with the back of my mind trying to figure out what to do with Degas because it's still kind of haunting my life. So, um, so yeah, so keep watching. Um, subscribe if you can. And, um, and we'll be back eventually eventually i promise with a video about suilo and uh, and we'll have some information there
All right, we'll see you next time.